Hello everybody, welcome back to OMM. You guys are incredible. You're the best people I could ever have hoped to watch an idiot on the internet. You've done it. Between us, we've raised the money to be able to buy this. This is now safe. This is now going to be leaving the scrapyard. Thank you. What you've done has not only made an idiot very happy, we've saved a bit of British history for future generations to be able to enjoy. And as it's now open up, that you'll soon find out where this is going, but you guys will be able to come along and get involved and learn the skills and just take part in putting something back. Putting this piece of history back on the map, getting it working, making it be alive again. Rescuing a locomotive from a scrapyard is something that I thought was limited to the previous generations. It wasn't something that my generation, that us, that we would ever get the opportunity to do. And here we are. We've done it. This is coming home. So thank you to each and every one of you. Any money that we make over the target of saving this and transporting it home will go straight into the restoration of this and of 294266, keeping that running. So please, I'm, I, I'm overjoyed with the amount of money we've got and that we have saved it and it's coming home. But any more you want to give will ensure that this returns to service and that the other one keeps on running as well. I've got a fleet of Locos. I've got 248s. Put them together, they might shift something. But guys, I am truly indebted to all of you. You are amazing. I was nervous doing this. It was a big amount to ask for you guys. I never thought we'd actually do it, especially not in the time scale. You guys are mad. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. It's, it's gonna come home. It's moved out ready. It's, it's happening. Dragging the Rustin out to the pickup area was symbolic of the start of its restoration to work in order, which initially scared the life out of me when the wheels would not move, indicating that maybe the final drive and the gearbox itself was seized solid. But then there was the sound of a tree buckling, collapsing and breaking. Because it turned out that one little tree at the back had grown up through one of the holes in the rear wheel set and that had locked the whole thing up. And with the tree giving up, the wheel sets turned, which meant that the wheels themselves, the axle boxes, the chain, and most importantly, the final drive weren't actually seized. This was the furthest that Ruston 393-303 had moved in over 40 years. Perhaps a slightly undignified way, but it moved. Seeing the little Rustin actually turn wheels and move slowly towards its new future was one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. And then we had to remaneuver it. I've never seen a locomotive be dragged around 90 degrees before and admittedly it was a painful thing to watch. Normally we have a turntable for this, not just ploughing it through the ground. But there we go. I've got a locomotive that can do mad drifts, yo. That's sure to give me some more street credit. And then the nice guys set about removing the pesky tree because apparently that wasn't coming with me. You guys are amazing. Thank you all so much for donating. I didn't think it was gonna happen, but here it is. It's been moved out and it's ready to go to its new home. 2023, and this is leaving a scrapyard. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So today, very much thanks to you wonderful people, you absolutely mad, wonderful bunch. This thing is coming home to be a future project, not only to fix 294266, but to go to a railway where it's going to be a project that you guys can help get involved in. It's actually happening. First though, because we've got a high hab coming that's able to pick it up, I want to try and knock out the wheels so that I can drop out the wheels when it gets to the railway. So with that, what have I done? What have you helped me do? What have you are enablers? You've made this happen. Thanks. So stage one, I want to try and remove what's left of those split pins to knock out those, which look pretty much rust sealed in there and there. So wish me luck. These pins are what keep the axles in. They go underneath the springs and stop the wheels from dropping out. And amazingly, having cut off the split pins and whacked them with a hammer, they moved. So I set about removing the rest of them. 
and before long I'd managed to get all of them to move. There's a chance this is going to work. The next job was to try and remove the brake rigging as it ran underneath the axles and would prevent us from dropping them. I attacked the old nuts with a Dremel but didn't have much luck so we enlisted the help of one of the gentlemen from the scrapyard who used a gas axe and with a bit of good old brute force and ignorance of using a mallet, a hammer and a punch we managed to knock out some of the bolts and release them from the brake rigging. This took an awful amount of time and the rear runs didn't release which put us behind which meant that the chain tensioners, the final component holding the wheel sets in, had to be cut so we'll have to remake them later. We then put some steel on the bed of the truck and then we were ready to pick the rutten up. It was kind of poetic that we were going to be reusing the same holes that had been gas axed in the side of it to drag it into the scrapyard on the back of a skip lorry all those years ago. Well, this is it. mine. At this point I was feeling a little overwhelmed by it all. It had actually happened. The thing was now on the back of the lorry and was soon being strapped down ready for its journey away from the scrapyard to safety and to restoration. So that was the crane taking the strain off the train. As the locomotive was chained down to the bed of the lorry, Tom started to transport the multitude of tools that we scattered around the site back to the car and the magnitude of the situation started to set in with me. It was happening and soon we were ready to depart. So this is the culmination of a year's worth of work to get to this stage here plus all you wonderful people and for me this is a dream come true something that I've always fantasized about something I've always dreamed about saving a locomotive from scrap I have joined those hallowed halls of the pioneers who went to bury and rescued engines there okay maybe a little bit different from rescuing a castle or a hall or even a battle of Britain from Barry a proper mainline engine to a tiny little Ruston but I've done it I've saved an engine from scrap. This is going home. This is going to have a very long, but this is going to be restored. I don't really know how I feel. I'm, um, I feel very indebted to you lot. I really feel very indebted to you lot. And thank you. And um, you've you made, you've made something very special happen that I never thought I'd have to be the opportunity to do to, to, to literally save something like this from scrap. I mean, to rescue something from scrapyard had always been something I dreamed of doing, and we did that with biking. But a locomotive, a proper engine, oh, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's something I never thought I'd be able to do. Finding a locomotive in a scrapyard in 2022 is, is not something really that happens. But to have that and, and to do it, yeah, this is, this is great. And this was it. This was the moment that I never actually thought would happen, but you guys made happen. This is Rustin 393-303 leaving the scrapyard. I realised something amusing. This was the fastest that Ruston 393-303 had ever travelled, and it was also the furthest it had ever been away from its home, having only ever worked at the Wellingborough Wagon Works. Actually, I take that back. This now was the fastest it had ever been. Its top speed is 9 miles an hour. As the Ruston hurtled eastward towards its new home, Tom and I accelerated away to make sure the site was ready for the Ruston's imminent arrival at the Whitwell and Reefham Railway. I was there in a... Having collected several sleepers and stacked them up to take the new arrival, it arrived at its new home at the Whitwell and Reefham Railway ready for restoration to begin. It had now come to a heritage railway. This is all thanks to you guys. With the Rustin now on site, the operation was to offload it and to drop the wheel set out and place the chassis and the remains of the Rustin up on the sleepers that we'd positioned so that the engine could be worked on. The theory, at least, of this was fairly simple, and we'd ensured that all the parts moved and anything that was in the way had been taken off or cut through. And as the crane unfurled and picked up its chains, I was feeling quite optimistic about the whole thing. And once again, we made use of those holes, gas axe in the side of it so long ago, and we were ready to offload it in its new home.
and with the locomotive now on solid ground at its new home, all I had to do to release the wheel set was to knock out the pins which retained the springs. And with a punch, these came straight out. So all we had to do was lift it and the wheels would drop out. Or not. So you may realize that the footage kind of ended rather abruptly there. That's because dropping the wheels out of this wasn't as easy as we thought. And as we were against the clock with the nice hi-hat man, who was absolutely amazing, SC Fabrications went above and beyond anything we could ever have hoped for. If you need to move anything awkward or weird, I can only recommend them. They were superb. The guy went way over the amount of time he was meant to give us to help get this off its wheels. And here it is. Here it is. Safe on blocks and sturdy at the Whitwell and Reefen Railway. And it is now ready for us to begin restoration. So the next video coming up will be a look around and see what it is we've actually bought, apart from a massive paperweight. But to each and every one of you, I cannot thank you enough. I, I, it's no secret that I was really nervous launching this appeal because I thought I was asking too much of you guys. And now, not only is it safe that we've done it, actually released something from a scrapyard, that childhood dream of succeeding and rescuing something from scrap actually complete. It's absolutely beyond my wildest dream. I never thought I'd get to do this. I never thought I'd be able to rescue an actual locomotive, an actual piece of heritage from scrap. I never thought it would actually happen. But here we are, thanks to you amazing people. And you guys helped make this happen. You helped save a locomotive from scrap. And of course, that was the easy part because now the hard bit begins. Now, at the time of filming this, we have some £10,700 in the kitty, which means that all in the by the time I managed to get this here, it has cost me £3,500. It actually cost me less than I set out to do, which means we've got like lots, like £6,000 or more of money to start working restoring this, which means steel for the cab is easy to get because we could just buy it. Repairing the damage that we'll look at in the next video, we can fix that and sorting out the engine. There's a budget for that. The restoration of this, thanks to you guys and your amazing generosity, means that this is going to come back a lot quicker than I ever dreamed. And most importantly, I can use some of that money on 294266 and make that happen. That's going to be back in service this year. And that's exciting. And of course, we've made note of everybody. So for all of you who have paid over £10, you'll be invited back to the day of 294 back into traffic. All of you have done over 50 quid, you're getting a footplate ride. And all of you over 100 quid, you're getting your name on a plaque in this. And of course, if you want to keep donating, please do. All the money you do will go towards getting this and the other one sorted and working. It's not going on anything else. It's not buying me food. It's not doing anything at all, apart from making this and the other one come back into service. So please, I feel a complete and utter arse saying please keep donating at this point because you have exceeded my most wild and insane dreams. I never thought this would happen. I never, I didn't think it would succeed. That's the main thing. I, I was dubious we would succeed. I didn't think it would happen. I didn't think it would be here. I didn't think it would be safe, but it did. And you guys are amazing. And I am, I'll be honest, very tired and stressed. So, this is the day after the day that it moved because we had to come back to shoot the end of the video having got it here and got it safe and honestly I had to come back to realise that I hadn't dreamed it all. Maybe a nightmare because yeah. Anyway, thank you so much guys. We saved a locomotive from scrap. Again, massive shout out to SC Fabrications for moving it. There's a link to their website in the video description if you need them for any similar such services. Cannot recommend them enough. Professional, friendly and above and beyond. And very reasonably priced. So coming up now are a couple other videos, including moving my other Rustin and firing up for the 30K celebration. So you can see the kind of thing that we're going for. And big, uh, and the other big thing, of course, as we end this video, is keep an eye on the channel for working party dates when you can come join as a member of the Whitwell and Reef and Railway and get involved in restoring this and probably end up on the channel. Thank you so much, guys. I, I genuinely feel like I need to cry. I, it's beautiful. Honestly, it's fantastic. I, on a serious note, all joking aside, you're amazing. You really are. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm crying as well. <laughs> oh.
what we done.